Um, it's as simple as really just screenshotting the page uh, and asking the gram bot to take a look at it. I'm going to do that and pull it over into Grambot. Wow. There we go. I'm going to upload my file into Grambot. Screenshot I just took straight from the Figma file. Uh, I'm going to ask it to please review this for grammar, punctuation, and for any jargon. We're getting check marks for each section here. And then it starts to hit that section that I did edit, a chat with Rocket on the future of lending. Uh, I had a typo in there, which is catching. Um, it has the over here and it updates it to sentence case per our guidelines. It's also going to give me a revision of how to approach with the plaid tone of voice. So rather than using all of this jargon, it helps simplify the copy here. The idea is it's as simple as a copy and paste into Figma. We're just gonna do that right now. And look, it's two thirds the size as it was before, which is really nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, it usually what would take me probably an hour or so to go through this. It did it in basically 30 seconds or so, which is fantastic for, for anything that is just like a lower priority kind of visibility kind of thing. This is like a really great self-serve option. Folks, welcome to Sneak Peek. This is your host, Jay. And today I have a very, very cool topic that all you content designers are gonna love. I've had a lot of content designer friends tell me, Jay, it's only me, one single content designer. I gotta support the entire design team. There's only so much that I can do reviewing your designs manually. Is there a better way? So to solve that, Greg is joining me today. Greg works at Plaid and he's figured out a unique way where you can use chat GPT to kind of like turbocharge this process, empower designers to do a lot of like this stuff by themselves using ChatGPT. Greg, super stoked to have you on Sneak Peek. Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. So let's kind of like go back in the past, like before you came up with this new process using ChatGPT. If you didn't have ChatGPT and a designer came to you and like, hey, Greg, I need some help for the content on this page. How would you do it? If it it's a very manual process. Basically, somebody will come in. I might get tagged through a email or through Slack. People will kind of like come up to me and ask, can you take a review through my content? Make sure everything is basically up to code with our style guide. Make sure all of the UX makes sense. It takes, it takes a lot of time. I can kind of like run through a page right here. Um, and this is something that we built out for Effects, our customer conference, or had like all of our product updates recently. This is an opportunity for people to sign up. I go through here. I have to step by step, really go through and proof all this. And as you said, I'm kind of like, I have a team, but a lot of the time I'm the only person who's doing this and I'm that final piece of the puzzle before it gets like put up live. So it, it's, it takes time and you want to make sure that you give it the time that it deserves, but it takes away from that time that you wanted to use to put into other projects as well. Um, I'm gonna go through section by section here. Uh, if you go through, make sure all the names are spelled correctly. Oh my God. Titles are correct a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm going through and referencing different places throughout the company to make sure all that's correct. One of the beautiful things that about this though is that you can automate the process for the most part. Oh my God, that's a lot of manual going line by line, making sure all the guests and the VIP names are correct before you hand off to engineering. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. And it's not, it's not like one of my favorite parts of the process either. It's just like sitting there for an hour at a time and like staring through line by line. Wow. So if you had to like automate some of this stuff and use chat GPT, can you show us how would you do that? Yeah, of course. So we've built out something that we're called Grambot. This is an awesome project by somebody on my team. I'm just gonna pull it up here. Yeah, so we've built out Grambot, which is a really cool tool to help us kind of be the first offense on a lot of the stuff, the things that aren't the highest priorities. What we've done is we have like a 12 page grammar guide that my team's built out and we've uploaded it into Grambot here, along with our brand guidelines, our email best practices, and maybe a couple of like specific creative specs to keep in mind, such as border length or something like that. But we've given the Grambot instructions. They are grammar and brand voice assistant. They're going to do everything from keeping track of punctuation, title casing, to making sure that the content is in our voice, which is really hard to do. I can give you an example of how it runs as well. So one of the things that we've done or I've done here is I've got my Figma file. 
This is the original file we were just looking at a moment ago. I'm pulling it over a version I just created over here. What the big differences are is you can see the title case is off here. Typically, I would have to go back to the person, flag this for them, or go into the Figma file, up, update it myself. I've added a bunch of jargon in here, which is like against the Plaid style guide. So we're talking about cross vertical ecosystems, end to end home ownership, re-architecting, uh, things like that. This would usually be flagged manually by me, and we're going to take it into Gramba and see what it can do with it. It's as simple as really just screenshotting the page and asking the Grambot to take a look at it. I'm going to do that and pull it over into Grambot. Wow. There we go. I'm going to upload my file into Grambot, the screenshot I just took straight from the Figma file. Uh, I'm going to ask it to please review this for grammar, punctuation, and for any jargon. Just give it a moment and it's going to spit us. Oh. So remember the top of the image over here, I didn't change anything. It seems like this is all good. We're getting check marks for each section here. And then it starts to hit that section that I did edit a chat with Rocket on the future of lending. Uh, I had a title in there, which is catching. Um, it has the over here and it updates it to sentence case per our guidelines. It's also going to give me a revision of how to approach with the plaid tone of voice. So rather than using all of this jargon, it helps simplify the copy here. So AI is reshaping how industries work rather than AI is transforming cross vertical ecosystems. I can also ask it to give me a little bit more detail as to why it changed the voice. So it has multiple jargon flags, which is calling out right here. And in the past, I've been able to get it to give me also like a sentence by sentence breakdown. So let's see if we can do that. And reformat. Oh, wow. I love this. Much easier to consume. Yeah. So now the next steps for a designer, if they were reviewing this by themselves using Grambot, would be to take the updated copy and then just manually update it in Figma by themselves. That's right. They can pretty much just copy and paste what they've got over here. I mean, of course, you always want to use your brain and, and make sure uh, you're thinking through how, how everything works and, and reading through it. But yeah, the, the idea is it's as simple as a copy and paste into Figma. We're just going to do that right now. And look, it's uh, two thirds the size as it was before, which is really nice. Oh, wow. It, it did also point out that there was a typo in here. Yeah. As the sentence case. So I'm just going to update that. And yeah, it usually what would take me probably an hour or so to go through this. It did it in basically 30 seconds or so, which is fantastic for, for anything that is just like a lower priority kind of visibility kind of thing. This is like a really great self-serve option. And it just got me thinking if all the designers are doing self-serve with some basic content checks, then your time is freed up to kind of focus on more other higher level creative campaigns. Cause then you don't have to like manually do all this review all day. That's it. Exactly. It, it raises the baseline so much higher than it, than it previously was. You don't have to go in and, you know, fine tune every single piece. People should be coming to you as long as you can spread this out within your team. People should be coming to you with like a, a better place that they're started with. And you can focus on either more creative campaigns or, or whatever else you need to do today. Oh my God. Amazing. So basically every designer in your team now has access to Grambot. Yeah. Yeah. We shared out the link. We've done a handful of just kind of like little touring of, of showing how it works. It, it's been a really big hit. It's the, we're, we're really big on AI here at Applied and it's like the second most popular GPT. Yeah. So. Greg, one of my content designer friends, Kathleen, had a very good follow-up question for this. Since you created the Grambot and it's able to give this self-serve option, how do you deal with updates to the content design brand guidelines? So anytime you decide to make a change in the future, like we're going to go from title case to sentence case, for example, then do you have to then go and manually update the rules you fed to Chad the Grambot? Yeah, that's that's a good question. And it's not not so much as manually updating the rules to, to Gramba itself. It's like we we have kind of a section where we keep all of the rules in here. 
we have a Google Doc where we have all of our guidelines. We go in and update the guidelines anyway, so it's as simple as just basically like saving out the PDF and re-uploading that PDF into Grambot, and then all the changes are reflected in here. Wow. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, what you're saying. It, it's really easy. It, it takes, it, it's, it's no much tougher than going in and, and updating the document itself. Amazing. Yeah. The next, the next step for us also is going to be eventually figuring out how to get Grambot from a separate tab into Figma so that people can do this as they work. I, I want it to be as simple as somebody hits a button over here and it goes through and it scans your document. But we're not there yet. I think it's going to take some engineering help to, for us to do that. And then something I was curious about is how do content inconsistencies lead to potential loss of trust with customers? Like if you didn't care about some of the sentence casing, title casing, and some of these inconsistencies, aside from it looking bad or not following the brand standards, how does it lead to loss of trust with customers? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It, and it's easy to not care, but it is really important for the brand itself. We are talking about a brand implied that is focused on building trust with customers making sure you're working with sensitive information all the time, right? You're working with like banking details or you're working with fraud prevention or things like that. Every single inconsistency that somebody sees on your website is going to add to that distrust of like, can I really trust this brand to prevent a bad actor from getting into my system if they can't even go through and keep track of like how they speak about themselves and the casing that they use and making sure that these images are pixel perfect. Everything has to, be, has to have that great impression on a customer and every single inconsistency adds to that little bit of doubt in their mind. Got it. So Greg, do you use ChatGPT as a creative partner when you're working on new campaigns? Yeah, I, I see it as an idea generator. You might go through and ask it for some touch-ups. You might ask it for some ideas to get started. This is just one example. I picked out a line, for example, that I didn't like that this isn't for everyone. I wanted to give me seven different ways for it to, to come together. And I'm basically having a conversation with it in here. I wanted to understand what I'm looking for. I'm giving it fine tuning. I'm almost like creative directing it in a way uh, and then helping it to give me a handful of different options. I like that one where you said, I don't think you understand. I need something bold. This is for an exec dinner. Be direct. Exactly. And it, it does help me like work on my own creative direction lines. And I feel bad if I'm like telling it something like this at times. I, I don't think you understand what I'm going for. I, if, if, if I was working with somebody else, I would of course like fine tune it a little bit. And it helps me take a little look at my own language, which is nice. One of the things that I, I love doing to it is, is giving it, tell it to give me 40 options. Take your time. It'll sit there maybe even for a full minute and then it's going to start sorting thing or it starts to give me a full list. And from there, I might tell it to, you know, fine tune it. I might ask it to start to set things into categories like it's doing here. And then, then I'm getting, going able to kind of like fine tune even further, if that makes sense. Oh. It's, it's another example of like something that needs to take a long time. And I'm not saying that you don't want to use, like you want to use your brain to get to a certain point with it, but it helps with that first step of like, oh, I see something I like out of this piece. Maybe I can use part of that and then give it further direction or think on it myself to, to update it. There was a time, Greg, when you had to do, give creative direction to humans. And now you're giving creative directions to an AI. You think that's the future? I think it's, I, I think it's a really tough question, right? I think you're going to need both in the future. I think you're still going to need the people to help uh, think of ideas and to come up with strategy and think together. I think there's a level of the AI coming in and doing some of the grunt work that you used to have to do. The, the future is kind of going in and picking out, being like a tastemaker and, and picking out the things that are really working and knowing about your audience and what's going to work for them. And then using something like a GPT or uh, a bot to help you with maybe I think of different options and uh, how to get started on something. Now, quick question here, because this is a new campaign, do you also give it some like knowledge base? Like these are the guidelines when you come up with responses or it's very free flowing here? It's a bit of both. I, I want to make sure I'm not giving it too, too much direction in the same way as I would be doing in like a brief. I don't want to kind of like set really strong barriers for it. I'll, I'll give it a basis of what we're of who we're speaking to, what we're talking about, and kind of help guide it from there. Okay. I was asking those questions because I think for this video, I'm going to use Chad GPT to help me come up with a video title. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great at little tasks like that in particular. 
The toughest I, I've seen it, the toughest uh, I don't think it's at yet and where I really think people need to weigh in is conceptual work. You might want to think of a, a wrapper for how to deliver on a message or a campaign, right? Maybe one thing that we did a, a plaid, for example, we built out like a bodega style booth at Money 2020. That was all people just thinking about it and, and how do we come up with something really cool. You could probably feed it that example and it will come up with similar ideas, but I don't think it, it's at that point where it's going to be able to come up with a really good concept by itself. Got it. So in closing, Greg, for all the viewers watching that are on the fence of, you know, using chat GPT or they feel like it's not really worth their time, what is that one piece of advice we'll give them? It's... It's here and, and it's, it makes sense to use it on a daily basis, in my opinion. Never, you never want to lose that piece of your own spin on something, but in helping to automate a lot of that work that you don't want to do, it, it, it's a fantastic tool at this point. Thank you so much, Greg, for coming on Sneak Peek and sharing your wisdom. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hey, this is Jay. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see how top design teams do AI design and growth design, Go to sneakpeek.design, subscribe to my newsletter, and refer your friend to it to unlock this exclusive content.